Hi everyone, I'm Johan Franz from Xilinx. Today I'm going to show an example of a 56 gigabit per second PAM4 ADC based wireline transceiver. In recent years, wireline data rate has gone beyond 50 gigabit per second and PAM4 signaling has been widely adopted. The performance of a multi-level signaling such as PAM4 is very sensitive to residual ISI. In order to suppress residual ISI, it requires a large number of equalization tabs, such as FFE or DFE. If we do the equalization in digital domain, uh, we can have a large number of FFE, FFE tabs without any linearity concern. It is also PPT independent and scalable in case we need to support higher data rate in the future. In an ADC-based uh, transceiver architecture, equalization is done in two domains analog and digital. A transmit FFE equalizes the signal by reducing the low frequency component of the signal. It reduces the overall signal swing. In turn, it helps the linearity of the receiver front end. The receiver front end further equalizes the signal, resulting a signal that, is, that has a low peak to main ratio. The partially equalized signal helps relax the dynamic range requirement of the ADC simplifying the design of the ADC and also the subsequent uh, DSP block, hence lowering the overall system power. The 4TAP FFE PAM4TX uh, takes parallel data input and it serializes it into four uh, bit streams. Each bit streams is associated with each tap of the FFE. For each tap, we allocate a certain number of PAM4 voltage mode driver slices the number depends on the FFE coefficient. The signals from each step are then summed up in the analog domain, in this case, at the transmitter pad. At the receiver, the input is terminated using T-coil enhanced termination scheme. It is then fed into a series of continuous time linear equalizer, CTLE, that performs high frequency and mid frequency boosting. VGA, or variable gain amplifier, ensures that the amplitude of the signal at the ADC input is within the ADC dynamic range. The ADC takes the analog signal and convert it into parallel uh, digital symbols. The DSP takes the digital symbols and generate the final binary parallel data. ADC calibration performs skew corrections of the ADC sampling clocks in the analog domain and also performs offset and gain correction in the digital domain. Equalization adaptation logic dynamically sets analog equalization setting, the CTLEs, and also dynamically sets FFE and DFE taps in the DSP. A CDR logic adjusts the output phase of the phase interpolator to make sure that the ADC sampling clocks are positioned at its optimum sampling point. An inverter-based uh, CMOS circuits using switchable inverter, such as shown in this uh, left figure here, is used as uh, major building blocks for the receiver front end. The inverter can be connected to form a GM cell, like uh, shown in this figure here. If the input and output are connected, the inverter is formed, is uh, forming a one over GM load. If extra resistors are used, we can use this uh, structure to form an active inductor. Using inverter as building block allows us to take advantage of the FT of the technology. It is also area and power efficient. For example, the entire receiver front end at 56 gigabit per second has no passive inductor. A full CTLE circuit using the previously mentioned building block is shown in this figure. Uh, three GM paths share the same active inductor load. The main path is shown in the middle here. It has a wide band frequency response. In the upper path, the low frequency component of the signal is subtracted from the main path, effectively forming high frequency boosting. The cutoff frequency is defined using programmable capacitance shown in CHF here. The similar thing from the bottom path, it also subtracts the low frequency component of the signal from the main path using different cutoff frequency, effectively forming mid-frequency boosting. The 28 giga symbol per second, 32-way time interleaf ADC is shown in this figure. 
The ADC input is first interleaved by a factor of 4 using a 4 phase of 7 GHz rank 1 sampling clock. Each phase of the rank 1 sample is then interleaved by another factor of 8 using 8 phases of 875 MHz rank 2 sampling clock. Each of the rank 2 sample is converted into 7-bit uh, digital symbols. The top figure in the slide shows the timing diagram of the 4-phase uh, 7 GHz rank 1 clock. Opposite phases such as phase 0 and phase 2 are made to be non-overlapping so they can share the same input buffer. The figure at the bottom shows the timing diagram of the 8-phase 875 MHz rank 2 clocks associated with phase 0 of the 7 GHz rank 1 sampling clock. The rising edge of rank 1, rank 1 sampling clock is aligned with the rising edge of the rank 2 sampling clock. For 32-way TI ADC, the, the total time for sampling and conversion is 32 symbols or 32 UI. Out of that 32, 3 UI is allocated for sampling and 29 UI is allocated for 7-bit conversion. The ADC sampling front-end is also built using the same building blocks as the CTLE. The buffer is using an inverter-based GM cell and an inverter-based active inductor load. The track and hold switches are implemented using complementary pass gates, clock and clock bar, in order to cancel the drain to source capacitance from the input to the output, feed-through cancellation scheme using cross-coupled always-off pass gates are shown in this figure. The asynchronous SAR sub-ADC uses differential toplet sampling. Since noise and, convert and delay of the comparator is important in the ADC implementation, we want to keep the, common mode, the input common mode of the comparator constant uh, during conversion and differential toplet sampling allows the common mode, um, the input common mode of the comparator to be constant. The constant common mode of the comparator is set to its optimum operating point. The CDR controls the output phase of the phase interpolators. There are a total of four phases at the output of the PI. A skew correction is done by adjusting the delay on each of the four phases of the four phase uh, PI output. The goal of the C correction logic is to make sure that the four phases of the ADC sampling clocks are equally spaced. The 7 GHz 4 phase clock is also fed into four groups of divide by 8 circuit, each group associated with each of the rank 1 sampling clock. In total, there are 32 875 MHz clocks going to the 32 instances of the SAR ADCs. The DSP takes ADC samples and deserializes it by a factor of 2 in order to reduce the operating frequency of the DSP blocks. The raw ADC samples are offset and gain corrected. The corrected ADC samples are then fed into an FFE block. The FFE block performs some of product operations between the input data and the 15-tap FFE coefficients. The output of the FFE block is fed into a one block which performs one-tap DFE equalization. One tap speculative DFE equalization is the, final step, uh, is the final step of the equalization. The result is a final binary decoded data. Over 33 dB channel, the transceiver is able to achieve better than 1 e to the minus 12 without additional crosstalk. When 2 millivolt additional crosstalk is added to the receiver, the BER is better than 1 e to the minus 6 which exceeds IEEE spec of 1 e to the minus 4. In order to check the functionality and the performance of the CDR, an input data that has a frequency offset of 200 ppm is fed to the receiver. And as shown in this figure on the right, the receiver is able to clear IEEE to the tolerance mask. Implemented in 16 nanometer FinFET process, the transceiver consumes 9.7 picojoule per bit 20% is consumed by transmitter, 40% consumed by receiver, front-end, and ADC, and DSP consumes 40% of the power. For further details, please refer to the reference shown in, on this page. Thank you very much.